This is a review of Excel Module 1, Project 1. So it looks like Katie works for the Human Resources Department and she is currently finalizing a profit and payroll worksheet to close out the week's figures for where she works. Now I'm not going to go over this entire project, but I do want to uh, hit on some of the things that I think maybe you either might be new or that I really want to make sure that you have an understanding of. So in number five, we were going to use, or we are going to use, flash fill. So what I'm doing in cell D6 is they want me to type in ML3583. So what I'm doing is I want to pick up the first letter from the first name and last name, and then I'm taking the date, 3583, the birth date, and I'm going to use flash fill. So in the lower right-hand corner, you see that little box, and you get the black plus sign there. If I double-click, then it's automatically going to fill. Well, that's not quite what I was going for. Sometimes this works exactly. It recognizes the pattern. And other times it doesn't, but you have a smart tag right here. So if I click the drop down arrow, instead of a fill series, what I want to do is flash fill. So I can see that it did exactly what I wanted it to do. So on each of these, it picked up the first initials of the name and then it threw in the date. Number eight was using the count function. So in B17, I want to count to determine how many people are employed. So I'm going to count the values that are in B5 through B14. So I'm going to click in B17. Now there's a couple of different ways that you can enter this formula. And if you're familiar with formulas, you can just go ahead and start typing this in. So if I start with equal, type in count, now this is a new feature, I think this was 2010, that we get this drop down. And you can see we have a lot of different count functions that we can use. And you are, I'm going to make sure you guys learn all of these over this semester. But the first one counts the number of cells in a range that contain numbers. So the range that I select does have to contain numbers. So I can double click on this, it automatically opens up my parentheses, and now I'm going to select the range B5 through B14. My marching ants is around the range that I want to include. B5, the colon means through B14. Now I can manually close the parentheses or if I just hit enter, that's an indication to Excel that I am done with this formula and it will automatically close the parentheses for me. Number 10 wanted you to change the con cell content to read profit through March 1 through 7, 2018. Now that's a pretty straightforward one, but I did want to review a couple of different ways that you can actually change cell content. What a lot of people do is, I'm going to go ahead and click in A2, is they go up to the formula bar and change. And, and there is no right or wrong way. Um, I just want to show you a couple of different ways. You can also double click in that cell and edit directly within the cell. But here's another one that you can do, because a lot of times our hands are on the keyboard. So if you hit the function key F2 on your keyboard, it's those function keys across the top, that also puts the flashing cursor within the cell. And so there are three ways that you can go about editing a cell. Number 13, you're going to use a simple formula. So that's what they meant by enter a formula without using a function. So you're using a simple formula and you're simply subtracting the store's expenses from the store's cells. So that's going to be equal, because remember formulas and functions in Excel always start with an equal sign, B5 minus B6. And then you were asked to copy that over. And I'm just going to clear this out. So one thing you could have done is actually copied this, so Control C, then a Control V to copy, or you could use the autofill handle. So my autofill is also a copy feature. And when I copy that over, because a formula is automatically a relative cell range or cell reference, when you copy that over, it automatically changes to the correct cell or column or row reference. So it changed from C5 minus C6 
d5 minus d6. We'll learn a little bit later on the difference between a relative cell reference and an absolute cell reference.